Karen Dodd, welcome to The Basis Project. This is not a conspiracy if you can prove it. Can you see that? Oh, I'm wondering what you're doing. I thought you'd be in a monkey pop. Um, it's not a conspiracy. I can see it. I can see it, Miles. Yeah, very uh, This good. is from Loose Chains, Final Cut. <laughs> That's going back to 9-11. This T-shirt is 20 years old. <laughs> is it? It doesn't look it. You haven't worn it much then. Uh, it's just because, well... Well, what? But that's the whole point. If it's a conspiracy theory, you if you, if you can. Oh God! Well, it just I've just said it. I don't need to say it again. No, you don't. And we can see it, and it's not back to front, which is interesting. Because normally, when you're looking at a screen, things are back to front, aren't they? But I can see it as it is, as you're supposed uh, to read it. Well, that's because I'm not using a Skype camera. I'm using my television uh, Go, my GoPro, my Go. So that we can see all your things in the background. Yes, and if okay. I do this. You can see a picture of Radio Camera. I can indeed. I can. I remember going there last year. Yeah. Yeah. With somebody. They phoned me up early in the morning and up I went. Very and the, and, was, and the other one is the radio station, the last radio station we did called Energy 106 in Belfast. And that was a 1 million watt FM pirate. Wow. It's Radio Gym, but not as we know it. Not as we know it. You know it, though, because that's your background, isn't it? Yeah. I also did some work in television somewhere. But anyway, uh, uh, this is this is a unique occasion because we're talking to uh, the uh, we're talking to the Freedom Network, mm -hmm. and this is because you're an inspirational and very creative person who's decided to start a whole pile of things. Mm, thank and you for you've, that. You've spoken at uh, the Basis Summer Conference and the Basis Christmas Conference, both of them. I just did one. I think it was the uh, Christmas. The conference. Christmas one. Yeah, the little pixie lady on. Yeah, that was Dot Street, and Dot Street was one of the key investigators into one of the yeah. biggest single UFO cases in British history. And I, I was there at that forest about three weeks ago, looking for, you know, things. Ooh. Well, what happens if they find you? Did you, did you have a stone drop beside you by any chance? No, just, just acorns. 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 Yeah, and um, pine cones, which I actually brought home. I don't know if I'm allowed to, but I did. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, and a, uh, the it's an area of extremely serious stuff. Yeah, where is it? Which forest is it Ren again? Rendlesham Forest. Rendlesham Forest. In Suffolk, and they have got a, they have got a model of a of a spaceship there. Yeah, they all built that up because they decided they couldn't stop. UFO people go in there, so they actually no. they actually bring you to an area where nothing actually yeah. happened. It all right. happened at the East Gate, and the mm. East Gate, if you and the book called Left at East Gate means that when you leave the East Gate, you turn left, which then takes you across the back of the runway and takes you mm. into where the actual landings were. Five. That's of them. interesting. Five. I thought there were three. Because there is a trail, isn't there? It's There's a UFO, a UFO trail, trail. Uh, yes, and the so initial that's... the initial <laughs> bits on Capel Green, which is a brilliant film that uh, Gary Heseltine was involved with, which still hasn't been released in four years, mm. because he's blowing the whistle on a whole lot of stuff they don't want you to know about. Mm. A little girl saw these aliens uh, walking around their craft, and it was landed on the field, which their her grandpappy was there, Mm. And uh, and he said, "Oh, we better phone the um, the base to let them know something's happening there." So she's the original witness of these aliens or beings walking around. This craft landed on the on the on Capel Green, uh, which is just outside the perimeter of the of the mm. of the forest. And a whole pile more stuff happened. And they phoned the base, and then the base sort of. Um, uh, said uh, they phoned the local police, and the local police then told them to phone the base. Mm. And then the base then got involved. And then this gentleman called Charles Holt, who was not the deputy base commander at the time, because Dot Street found that out, he was essentially there in case something did happen, and then he would take control of it. Because there was a, there was a landing in 1977, and that... Everybody's ignored that one. And that involved five landings, five triangular craft, five little saucer things, and mm. a whole bunch of school children saw it. It was all witnessed. The British wow. investigators all witnessed that, all investigated that, and they've all been sidelined and taken over by other people I won't mention. No. Is it, is it still an active place for, for activity then? Yes, or yes, they, there it is. is. There's, okay. there's another really big thing that happened there is not too far from there there was an there was an invasion by German soldiers and the other part of that invasion was down at Weymouth 
where right. the legendary Roma Harding lives in that area. And that involved uh, an emergency weapon that the British had where they just dumped thousands of gallons of, of fuel into the sea through pipes which came up so the 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 um they just turned on these valves and then these the the, the things would erupt would uh, just the, the oil or the fuel would just rise to the surface wow evenly wow. and uninterrupted and then they just boom light it burned the lot wow that's a one form of ascension i guess yes <laughs> and the bodies were buried in the forest oh my god so imagine all that trauma. Mm. Wow. And it never happened because Britain never wanted to admit that they had been invaded. And But they, it did and it happened. But they were repelled because they were wiped out in the sea. Mm. So there's a whole lot of stuff going on there. And there's a whole lot of stuff going on in... And this is the first time that we formally collaborated. Are we talking about you and me now? Yeah, you and me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's the, that's yeah, the, that's yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. The Freedom Network work, working with bases. Yeah, I mean, you've done most of the work, to be honest, but I'm supporting you wherever I can. Well, that's and what it's all about. Yeah, yeah, and I'm going to come along and and, and um, speak about. Um, and I've, I was, I've got a list of the speakers. Hmm. Yeah, I have received. Now, those. unfortunately, one of the key speakers, Elena Danan, can't come. Or it's mm -hmm. at the moment she's not coming. She wrote me a very nice little letter a mm. couple of days ago. And this is because the basis thing sort of an actual dynamic things happening yeah. at the moment. For instance, yeah. only a couple of weeks ago, there was a major hearing in the United States with the CIA. And they have decided to take control of the whole UFO narrative. It's now called UAPs. And mm -hmm. independent investigators are now considered a threat to national security. So 80 Whoa. years of independent investigation and, and cases are now officially haven't happened. Whoa. They have taken control of it, or which are saying they've taken control of it. And people like me or independent investigators in the UFO community face arrest on the basis that they are a threat to national security because they might find out something. Yeah. For instance, a beautiful lady we all know, Jane Shattuck. Mm. has been keeping an eye on Frimley Manor because it's mm. right beside where she lives and she happens to drive past it a few times. Mm -hmm. And that is a major manor house in the Farnborough area. Uh, also, the, the Cote Technology... It's, it's Cote? C-O-T-E? Coach, like that. Coach, yeah. Cote, the Cote, something, Technology Park. F formerly, it's also run by Connecticut with Q two Qs on it, which is the fancy name... For DARPA, that's the Defence Advanced mm. Research Project Agency, and they took over from Marconi Defence Systems in 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 Farnborough, because in 1974, far, the Farnborough base was was accessed by non-humans who went straight in in the middle of the night, had a look at all their secret plans, and looked at everything. All the security people says, "What the fuck are we doing here? When these guys can just come in and do what the hell they like." And that, that was the shit hit the fan there. So you have aliens inside a secret defense base. It's the place where they built Concord. And there's another load of UFO stuff going on there. And it's not far from a not very controversial military facility called Deep Cut Barracks. Mm, mm, mm. And it's also mm. not far from a not particularly um, interesting and completely blasé thing called the Purbright Institute. Mm. And why did you raise your eyes to that, Karen? Well, I think it's just things that I've picked up on, you know, reading reading articles here and there and going to conferences and deep cut, you know, I just I've just heard a few things. So it's just interesting. I didn't know so near to where Jane lives. In that, it's in that area. And if you go to the forest one night, you might not come out of it with mm. things walking about. <laughs> yeah. And Purbright <laughs> is one of the licensees to a certain medicine which people have been getting due to mm. a certain ailment that people have got because they got patents to it and they are owned by certain families mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay it's enough substitutes yeah, there yeah yeah <laughs> I but just, it's interesting but, uh, it's interesting miles what you're saying that they're changing the names of things so that people can become more of a threat you know those those people that are investigating and digging stuff out of the woodwork. Um, so one has to be a little bit more vigilant, I think. In how yes, one we're not messing about, in other words. 
mm. and things happen. And um, OK, well, we're going to kick off on oh. the Friday afternoon. It depends when I can get a rig. And I'm really looking for a sign man. Oh. I'm also looking for a teas and coffees lady. I don't know if uh, the beautiful Christina wants to do that again after the slight faux pas we had at Christmas. I'm sure she'll come back. I'm sure she'll come back. Yeah. yeah. Well, so, she did such a good job. Yeah, she did do a very good job. It's just that at lunchtime, people are wanting a Christmas dinner and, well, they need something more than pot noodles. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, Friday, uh, and, and when I talk about this thing called Bases Actual, yeah, we could have we could have somebody come walk on stage who's actually a, a last minute basis person who's actually had an issue, and we had another we had a lady who did that at the conference in the summer, mm. and she's since recovering from an attempted takeout, mm. but we won't go into the details of that. This is a happy slappy conference, but at the same time, it's serious on one level. It, it is. I think happy slappy has to be the answer for all of what's going on here. If you don't have a sense of humour, you're, you're doomed, really. And I, I've got a bit of a weird sense of humour anyway. Well, so have I. So so you need it to get you through it. You need it to get but, you through it. And, um, and Karen, mm -hmm. my sense of humour is more silly billy than your sense of humour. Well, sometimes, Mars, I don't really know what you're talking about, but you're in the corner laughing away because your sense of humour is so uh, bizarre. Oh, my God. God bizarre. <laughs> Well, the important Bizarre. thing is the important thing is that um, the important thing is that the Basis Project runs a health spa for keeping people in really good condition. And uh, highlighting that, we have Ben Emblen Jones. Excellent. And he he's come up spa. with new stuff. Yes. Uh, we were talking at the uh, wonderful Probe Conference, which is a, a historical conference that's been going on for thirty years up in St Anne's on Sea, and a lot of stuff starts there. It's one of those sort of places that, you know, things start. Yeah. Uh, so uh, he's going to be talking about something new. And he's, I think he's going to be talking about something like we're all sort of doom and gloom and we're all going to die. And if we don't get hit by this, we're going to be hit by that. He's saying there's some kind of light behind all this and it's Ooh. we've got a happy. That's good. Well, there's a light behind you. I can see it in the it, reflection. So you, you, This light? No, I think it's it's on the, um, it's fine. No, it's fine. Oh, Sit back awesome. down. It's absolutely fine. It's just um This is my daylight balance unit. You know, the moon. The moon? Yeah. It's a daylight balance light. Okay. So no, you I'm, look absolutely fine. But no, we do it is all about the light, isn't it? And bringing the light to the surface or bringing it down upon us or us rising up through the light or whatever. You know, the light the light will always win. It takes just one match to light up a very dark room, just one match, you know. So um and love, love conquers all. So we do have to for tea tear times. Oh, for teen times. Tea and times. Forty and times. For what? It's forty and it's a magazine for skeptics. Oh, forty and oh, forty and times. Oh, right. Okay, I think it needs to be. Well, no, this, is, this is a comedy mug for serious things because they, they uh, uh, Charles Fort was somebody who took notes of, you know, on five hundred million. You know, there's, it rains literally frogs or something. Yeah. Uh, that sort of thing. Oh, I see. And all that I, oh, sort I see. Of, really take. Yeah. And it was in the seven, and it's been. Uh, they, they, it's been a magazine going on for a very long time, and that's having a cup of tea with a dinosaur. In the fortune times, now I understand. Are they still going then? Yes, the they are, time? and they've got what they call the skeptics. We okay. some people unkindly call them septics. <laughs> so that's a bit of a, a sense of humour. It is. One needs a sense of humour to get us through. But also, I should say, I think your conferences. Um, are amazing because you do you do sort of recruit the weirdest and wackiest um, speakers. You go as deep as you can go. And I know when you had a lady the first time I met you, which was only last year, that the, the first sentence she made that she she that came out of her mouth, we were blown away. We were blown away. And, um, and what was that? that Sophie or Sophia? Ah, right. Yeah. I was too busy and swearing or you were you were gurning. a little bit panicked and stressed. <laughs> First time I met you, I think you called me a shill actually, because I just came out of the blue, and God. you didn't know who I was, and I just came with. I was supposed to come with a friend who had done his back in, so I came on my own. And uh, well, uh, the the, the clarification before. to that was that you wanted to have Sophia and Julie at your conference, and they felt it was unwise for them to attend because they felt they were under threat. I agree. That doesn't call you a shrill, I, I, but it, I'm it, very happy that they didn't. It was the right thing. It was the right thing that was going down a different path. Your conferences are very deep and as, as deep as you can go and and dark and fun. 
and very yeah. informative. Whereas, which, which whereas is why what, I'm trying, to, I, what I, I'm trying to do is is is, is very different. You know, we're, we're on the same path, but or you know, parallel path, same destination, parallel path. Well, and that's it was, it was the right thing not to have Sophia and and Julia at my, at my gig. Definitely. Well, uh, that's actually why uh, the key the keynote speaker is Valentina Zarkova, Professor mm. Valentina Zarkova, mm. and she's extremely well. She's not extremely scientific. She is scientific. She is a professional professor, uh, just re recently retired, and yeah. her mathematics, her analysis of the solar system cycles, is proved mathematically without any question or any doubt that we are in a Maunder minimum. And yeah. her work and professional integrity has been speaking to physicists and Nature magazine and all that sort of stuff. So this is an opportunity for people of a wider ordinary level to yeah. hear from quite literally the scientific source of the raw scientific yeah. information what is actually going on. Yeah. And because it's, it's being backed up by normal people, by science. Yes. And, and that's what we want. Because but what exactly are you trying to achieve with this conference, may I ask, Mark? I know, but just... Well, so I, I spread it out quite, quite wide to have... Uh, I've, the, the main thing is that the CO2 narrative is is absolutely been disproved in court, uh, but the but the media is, the, is, is blocking all that understanding, as we've had with this whole thing. Mm. And there's a whole pile of reasons for that, which is... Which we, which we don't want to go. It would no. take ages. The, the the media is not telling us the truth. Uh, um, the point about having somebody like a, a, a scientist, the key people, for instance, Sophia is a direct witness of Draco Alpha Draconis in the underground multiple mm. deep tunnel system, and she was born on a a baby farm in southern mm. Africa. She's all part. She knows all about the human trafficking situation. Mm. She's been there, done it, got the T-shirt. She was there when certain ha things were happening in Reading snuff movies for a certain broadcaster and involving a, um, ooh, 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 uh, yeah. and that sort of stuff. <laughs> she was a direct witness to, to that sort of thing. Yeah. Now, I'm talking about somebody yeah. who I know. opened a popular entertainment show. I know, oh, I yeah. know. Yeah, I think, yeah, the big C. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so she had oh, yeah, I held it differently, sorry, like a cigarette. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, don't inhale. Um, so th that was an example of a direct experiencer explaining her raw experience to an audience, one to one, no second or third parties. No, and 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 that line. If I just come in here, her, that line. What you just said. I was born on a baby farm in Africa. That's what that we just. I'll draw everybody in the room silence. And and actually, you changed the, the speakers for the afternoon so she could come back on. And tell us more. And what is also interesting, I happened to be watching a program with my son last night. I think it was called Platform 16 on Netflix, a, a film. And, you know, they tell us what they do, what they plan in the movies. So they, they have to, there's this universal law. They have to tell us what's going on through one way or another. And that movie last night, watch it if you get a chance, was more or less about what you're describing. It was a farm for young girls. And it was, it was very interesting. They did escape in the end, but it is quite horrific because, um, you know, when you see these these fiction movies and stories, you realise they are... Well, one of the uh, other people who's going movie. to be there is Matthew Williams, who's my mm. my colleague, and he's he's a well-known circle maker, um, loads of really uh, uh, amazing information about that. The key thing from the circle-making point of view is that when they are making the crop circles, who are the other guys? Do you mm. see what I mean? Yeah. So we have a situation where crop circles are made by people. Yeah. Where, what the designs are is another thing, and who makes the designs, which need to be observed by an observer. That's yeah. another whole thing. Uh, and the the and, and but there, I mean, for instance, they've been they would be making a crop circle. It's absolutely pouring with rain, except where they're making the crop circle. <laughs> and then there's Answer temporary. That. Yeah, and there's, uh, when they're making a crop circle, they have a time distort between where they are in the crop circle and where the ob uh, external observers are. So that's the people who actually make crop circles. But uh, Matthew isn't going to talk about that. He talked about that at Bases in 2014. Yeah. Uh, what he's going to talk about is he's done a whole lot of underground urban exploring, and there's such a vast network of stuff that's underneath where we are. Yeah. Abandoned or maybe not so abandoned.
So he's going to show some pretty pictures. Very good. He's the best drone pilot. You've, you, you'll, you'll see he's got a six-engine six drone, not just four. Wow. Everybody's got four engines. He's got six. <laughs> well, that's, that course. adds greater stability. <laughs> wow, okay. So he, he's going to do that. Uh, that's on the Sunday. And then we got some, some beautiful lady called Maria Wheatley. Mm-hmm. Now, Maria, Maria, I can mm. say this, but she probably can't. She's uh, she's going to be lecturing uh, before before the conference in uh, in Blackpool mm. at the Eric von Erich von Daniken. Um, it's, it's basically an ancient aliens conference, and that's primarily, I think, run effectively by um, a certain TV company in the United States. But because with things work with contracts. Um, mm. I mean, this is what I, I actually disagree with this philosophy. If you have got maybe two speakers and they're talking maybe about something similar and somebody's got a different line of in investigation to the other, what these guys do is you can't say anything which is going to maybe annoy the other person. Mm. So, for instance, mm. Maria Maria is the key <laughs> researcher who's found these long-skulled people in, in Wiltshire. Yeah. And they're not yeah, yeah. tall. Yeah. But there's another researcher who says that there are tall people and she's got a difference in her analysis, and they're actually talking about different people, uh, but they're not. But the, but the way that the, the, the this sort of media messes things around is that well, we don't want to confuse the audience, so you're not allowed to say that. Uh, and I so therefore I'm saying mm. it. Maria Wheatley is a key leading researcher yeah. in long skulled people, elongated skulls to the back, which are not the same as the ones which are in South America. Yeah, and there are hundreds and hundreds of people. Of these people were dispatched, who were killed in in the in the in the long barrows all around here. Yeah, and the last conference that she spoke at, I the one of the summer, she wasn't able to talk about that because she talked about a, a at a conference in the states, and they put a six month embargo on it globally. Wow. So I don't I mean, that, like that. That speaks volumes. That speaks volumes. So so at bases, what she's going to be talking about the long skulls, is she? I think she's going to be talking about the long skulls. Hmm. Excellent. And then there's some other guy called Colon Wooliford, sorry, Colin Wolford, and he's part of the Bases <laughs> Keep Fit Club. And he's got new stuff. And he, he's, he, Colin's a deep thinker. Yeah. And he has seen an awful lot of stuff happening, uh, you know, in the movies and the science of the movies and all this sort of stuff. I mean, Colin would come in here with, with a DVD or even a VHS about a film that only was released on VHS, didn't get to mm. DVD, and it's got mm. a whole lot of really deep stuff in it. And then, and what about about what deep, deep uh, stuff about what deep stuff about the movies? You can tell everybody. Okay. Got oh, this okay. Prepared. Excellent. Oh, okay. Which I was just talking about. Yeah. Yeah, and that, that's the point. The codes and symbols and the. I mean, yeah. for instance, with yeah, Star yeah, yeah, yeah. Wars, every time they have a fight on Star Wars, there's a there's a pattern to the bright the bright flashes they have when they hit the swords. Wow. And that hits the audience with with certain yeah. numbers of flashes. Yeah. And then, for instance. Uh, in in Harry Potter, there's an evil, nasty guy there, and everybody hates the evil, nasty guy. And it turns Ooh, out uh, that the evil, nasty guy that they have in in the Harry Potter movies is actually Tim Refat. Mm. So those movies are designed for everybody to hate mm. Tim Refat mm. because Tim Refat's got a connection in there, and that's another mm. whole story. And mm. there's a new speaker called Martin Colburn, who you won't have seen. But he's been an audience, an attending audience, and he wants to really sort of get everybody working together to sort of get on with things mm. and not outsource things to somebody else, which mm. he has a complaint about, about the so-called love and light community. Well, a lot of people are complaining about the love and light community at the moment. I know they're not your, you know, your favourite people, are they? But it depends, you know, it's, it's, I think we've got to be careful here rather than just grouping everybody together. I agree. Now there's a... Well, there's yeah. a big thing. Um, one of the one of the podcasters or radio shows, Hugo, was talking about um, the love and light or the new age, and um, trying to sort of ridicule all the the, you know, the people that are doing the yoga and doing the meditation and, and whatever else you know is in with the, the new age movement. And I think you've got to be careful because I'm a I'm a trained yoga teacher, um, <clears throat> and I'm very awake. Um, and I also do some meditation, which is, you know, goes with the yoga. And there's a lot of people that are really genuine. So, you know, people come in to, to rock the boat, as you know. There's infiltrators all over the place and, and they're trying to dismiss things that are good. I'm not saying that the new age is, is, is great because I know what happened in the 60s. You know, a lot of these movements are 
hijacked for you know for for the wrong reasons but i think we've got to be a little bit careful with the love and light because i always say love and light <laughs> well no that's the point you've taken mm. action to do something about it and mm. that's the key as opposed to outsourcing it to somebody else who's going to do yes. it and that's the yes. basic point on that yeah, yeah and you've yeah. explained that really well mm. good and we've not we've got another scientific expert basically i'm trying to do saturday trying to have it sort of scientific -y sort of thing because we do have a professor coming and I, I not, I'm not entirely keen on her sort of saying you know, somebody, you know, beating it wrong. Hang on, hang on. You're not quite keen on what she's talking about? No, or... uh, because she would normally be talking in very high, high level academic circles. Yeah. So it's a big deal for her to come to a conference which is not talking at that extremely high professorial academic right, level. Right, lay, layman's terms sort so, of thing. So uh, yeah. I've explained it this layman. Now, I've got Mike Emery, uh, and Mike Emery is a very high-level American who would talk on a level which would think, wow, that's just wacko. But he would talk about um, the fundamental elements of the forces of nature down mm. to a two-dimensional level, and then it collides with 3D, and then yeah. we are manifesting that. Uh, but he also did a whole lot of stuff on orgon, on the or on on why the orgon technology, and he's been at pushing that envelope with a really brilliant guy called Mike Tysing in the states, where he started introducing a large amounts of electricity and mm. the electric field into the orgon. Um, devices mm. and that will immediately match with harry the ether now that's somebody that you that you brought along harry or I the have. ether I've, I've named him that i hope he's happy his, his name's actually harry rhodes but he works with the ether and with william wilhelm reich and, and and the organ and the energies and i just i just thought oh i'm going to call you harry of the ether and it's kind of i think he's quite happy with it because people are contacting me saying have you got harry of the ether well it works Contact details yeah it, it, it works because that's what he's talking about and I'm getting excited because all this stuff that you and I and many people know exists. And I mean, I've, I've, I've seen, I've witnessed certain things that most people think are bonkers. Otherwise, you can't, you can't really stand in your true sense of who you are if you don't have evidence, if that makes sense. You know, I've seen stuff and people say, oh, you're just watching another, my kids, you're just watching another YouTube channel or reading something. How do you know? So when you've witnessed the things, you know it's true. And what I'm loving and getting so excited about this love and light stuff is that we are evolving into these new sciences. That they're coming. They're coming. You know. Well, all, the whole the whole stuff. point about the ether was there was a yeah. huge attack on the ether. Um, the the ether is saying that even in a vacuum, you've got a material, something there. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you suck all the air out, there's no yeah. air or no, i.e., a, a, a vacuum in 3D. There are some, there's something other things still there, and that essentially is called the ether. Yeah. And this is when we go out at, at, into multi-dimensional things and yeah. all that sort of stuff. And that was heavily attacked by the so-called yeah. physicists in the yeah. end of the yeah. 1800s, in the same yeah. way that homeopathy was attacked. Mm. And then mm. we have these, uh, uh, the, and the whole point about electrical engineering theory and physics was it was it was gerrymandered, it was screwed, it was screwed up uh, in the end mm. of the end of the, the eighteen hundreds, which is why uh, um, Isaac Newton, who did not discover gravity, he discovered that um, in higher three higher equations, which would baffle you, that the electric field force is the dominant force in, in, in the universe and not gravity. Gravity is a mis misapplication of yeah. forces, which is why we can have so-called anti-gravity technology and fly yeah. at faster than the speed of light and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. But if we're constantly yeah. told about Einstein's theory of relativity, it's special theory of relativity because he he got well, sued. There's a whole case yeah. about that. Yeah, yeah. So the point about Valentina is uh, uh, Harry will then be dealing with all this stuff and he held Cloud Busters, you know, the Kate Bush album, Mark Devlin... You know, we're talking about you know uh, Kate Bush and the Cloud Buster, yeah. and that was all shot all around here. You know, yeah. So it's yeah, all in yeah. the area. It's sort of mixing different lectures, different past lectures, and bringing in things into the future, and have some like Harry, who's really applying this technology in an era of microwaves. Yes, and 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 hopefully he'll bring his cannon with him and do a demonstration. Yes. Because when he came to my gig the other week in Battle in East Sussex, it was a beautiful, sunny, sunny day. Friday was a bit of a Glastonbury festival, but that was fine. 
Saturday and Sunday, and we actually got sunburnt because we didn't expect it. And when Harry turned up trailing this big cannon, he said, well, I, I cleared it for you. I said, cleared what? He said, I cleared all the clouds so you'd have a really good conference. And I said, I, I wish you'd waited <laughs> because uh, <laughs> then you could have shown us how you cleared it. Um, yes. But anyway, it, it, he brings his cannon and he does a demonstration. I think it needs a bit of time to, to move the clouds, but yeah. how, how he describes But it. this whole technology goes back to the 80s. There's some yeah. wonderful VHS tapes. Trevor James Constable was doing yeah. this on, on a big ore carrier steaming across the Pacific, the Maori, and he was using these twisting cones which was spinning, and that's what Mike Emery is talking about. He's talking about uh, cloud uh, organ bubbles and stuff that we had him on a Christmas thing, and yeah. Christina and him went and made a wonderful organ bubble. In fact, the organ bubble I've got is just a flower pot full of is layers of, of, of iron oxide and silica and crystals oh. and all sorts of stuff in it, and we all made it on, on camera. Oh, and lovely. The, be the beautiful Christina was there with 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 uh, with Mike Emery, and they all made it. And we had people under the table, sort of handing up mixtures of cement <laughs> as they sort of professional hand. job then. And I had a three camera <laughs> shoot, and of course, my, uh, uh, Mike stands right with his back in front of them, so it was used to a two camera shoot. So then I was under the thing trying to move things. It was true blue. So Peter. were you getting stressed? Miles, were you were you running around and swearing and ignoring people? No, I was trying to breathe. <laughs> without breathing and then puffing in like a buffalo underneath, oh, okay. hoping it wasn't picked up on micro <laughs> on a microphone while running it and recording it and doing a mix at the same time. That's, well, you know this. You know that in July it's going to be perfect because you just got to go with the flow and, go, and, and that's not the whole worry point. about it. Which yeah. is why I do a thing called turn up with a jacket wearing shorts. What? Turn up with a jacket wearing shorts? Yeah, because because on 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 an MCU it looks as if I'm very serious. Oh, I see. <laughs> Okay. While the rest of the audience sees the full all view. Right. Well, then just lower the camera and let's see your knees and, and everybody will have a laugh oh, and all Jesus. will be well. <laughs> so uh, and so that that then the the idea on the Friday is everybody then goes to the bars and gets rat arsed. Oh. There's so a possibility. I've asked, um, what's his name, Piers Cor Corbin, if he can drop by. Okay, that'd be interesting. If he, if he, can, if he can drop by. Uh, yeah, with his megaphone and his yellow T-shirt. Yes, he's got a yellow T-shirt. That's right. <laughs> and uh, we'll want him to bring his 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 two. Well, how many thousand pounds did he get? This bung, you know, ten. Ten. ten, ten. <laughs> yeah. So if he ten, can, he can yeah. bring that, he could. Oh, you he could, could, yeah, yeah. He can help you with all your bung, new equipment. Yeah. You can put some your way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, uh, and then on on Saturday, uh, hopefully we might be able to uh, have a have a have a, a nice speaker's dinner in in the barge. Lovely. We'll see. We'll have to no, book that'd that. be lovely. We'll have to book that. And then, uh, as opposed to everybody go to their individual Chinese eating out of their whatever. But then <laughs> on Sunday we're word. going to have the wonderful Andrea. Did you talk to Andrea? No, I haven't. I haven't spoken to Andrea. She, she was actually at the last conference and she actually spoke to Jane. There was a moment you were all orbiting within the same vicinity. Right. And, uh, Andrea actually came to one of my er earlier conferences mm. and she's fantastic. Mm. And she well, knows. And what is her subject? Uh, Elaine, well, that's the trouble. I got into trouble. She is a past life coach. She does all. Sorts oh, of yes, I did meet Andrea. Yeah. We all went and had dinner together. Of yeah, course, six. Of at, course. Uh, former Miss England. That's right. And she was on the telly. She was on Good Morning she, Britain she, for a while. And then she mentioned Bilderberger or something. And, so, and then chucked her off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so she's coming and she's she's doing an awful lot of stuff. And that'll be great. Then Matthew. And then we've got Michael Shrimpton, who's going to give us the inside of what's yeah. going on, the politics of things. Mm. Uh, his unofficial word was that if the Conservative Party could um, banish Boris to the Tower and behead him the next day or a week mm. or a month or six months later... Um, mm. That they would do so, but for oh. some reason, yeah, they, they can't do that anymore. Mm. So he's just going to get a peerage and a thing. They but well, they've probably written a new law somewhere, haven't they? <laughs> a white paper that came in at midnight or something to protect those that need to be protected. Yes. So yeah, or like you say, a knighthood. Yeah. And, and yeah, all that. And don't mm. tell Van Morrison about that to Mark Devlin. And then there's this, this other guy that you've come up with. Uh, because I, I was really wanting to get a whole pile of journalists together. Oh, yes. So that the yes. journalists who are doing all this stuff could could then sort of, what the hell do you think's going on? 
mm. as opposed to mm. what we think's going on and the, all the new lot. We've got the, the wind blowing here. I know. I saw the curtain coming yeah, in and out. Wind's, yeah. yeah. The wind's blowing. Um, so he is coming, is he? Hmm. Not sure yet. Well, it's a brand new organization he set up. He's he yeah. set up the UFP, which sounds like an Ulster Freedom Fighter. <laughs> this is the Ulster Freedom Fighter Provisional. Sorry, stop it, it's not that. My, my Irish accent's different to yours, sorry. Well, the, the trouble about it, the, the, in Belfast, you'd have the, the Provisional IRA, and yeah. then you'd have the Ulster Freedom Fighters, right. uh, or the UDR. They don't say, it's, don't say the UDA. Uh, <laughs> but uh, it, it, it's the UFP sounds like something... Uh, Freedom Press. Th there is, there is, a, there is another initial you would see in Belfast called FTP. Mm. FTP. Oh, yeah. Freedom. What's that one then? Or are you not allowed to say it? Something party. Ah, oh, it would be feck, feck that person. Oh, all right then. In Rome. <laughs> feck that person in Rome. Although it would be probably <laughs> less broadcastable if I was to say yeah. it. Yeah. It, but so anyway, no. It's the it's the United Freedom. It's a United Free Press. Yes, because I kept getting the name wrong. But he's a lovely chap. Well, he's I think, uh, and the lovely Gemma uh, knows him, and so hopefully there's going to be a bit of a thing uh, uh, organised for the Can time. Can you let us know his name again? He's called Kerry, Ker Kerry Murray. Yeah, Kerry Murray. And he's not a lady. <laughs> like Kerry Cassidy. No, no, that's right. No, he's a lovely chap. I, I mean, I got into a meeting we had in Stratford. He literally just launched this, this Freedom Press party on the Monday and I, it came my way and I just grabbed him and to let him be out there and, 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 you know, let people know that the press are coming together and trying to um, relay the truth to us. So if we can get him on board, that would be excellent. That'd well, be I good. totally back that. I think that's, yeah. that's, that's what that's I'll give him a little for. nudge. If, if, you, if we haven't got a confirmation, I'll give him a little nudge. Yeah. Miles but at the same time, if they haven't got things organised and things, we don't want to rush it, but we'd just like to know no. that if they can just, this is an opportunity. Absolutely, to let them know, let everybody know what's happening. Have you got a space? Because there's another lady that I would love to, to bring along. It might be short notice now, but if there is a space, there's a lady called Gloria. Gloria, and she has set something up called the UK Truth, not the UK, sorry, The Truth. University, Truth yeah, University. Well, we don't have a get out time at the conference like we've had at the barge, so we, we can push it to seven o'clock or something. Well, I'll see if she'd like to come because she has got so much information. She set up this uh, this this Truth University because she's a professor. Yeah. She's a very well educated lady, and wh how I met her, or when I first spoke to her, she was talking about the Dead Sea Scrolls, and she said, "Are you familiar?" I said, "Oh, yes, yeah, something from school. I remember studying them in, in our religious education lesson." And she said, "Well, she was doing some research, and the research took her to things that were not true. So she started rewriting papers, and the papers were not printed. So she started digging down those holes, and she's she's quite quite an inspiration. Got a lot of knowledge. So uh, well, we nice could we could board. probably squeeze her in after the after the after. It depends how we'll try and do that on Saturday. Yeah." I mean, if if not, she's going to come to my next event after bases in September. We've got well, another. Let, let, let's get her in, to, even if it's only doing half an hour or something. Yeah. Just, okay, I'll, just, I'll give her. I'll give her we'll, a call and try and bring her on. The whole point board. about this is we're not we're not absolute. Well, well, we need to get that person off stage right now. Yes. Although yes, we do need yes. people with presenters with with powerpoints that work and get on stage and bloody get on with it. Yes. Oh God. Indeed. And talking about that, that, we've got Sandy Adams, and she's absolutely everybody loves Sandy. Mm. And she, the point about Sandy is, it's not a conspiracy if you can prove it. She can walk on stage with an actual copy of Agenda 21. Here it is. Anybody who doubts that doesn't exist, hit them over the feckin' head with it. If you says this doesn't exist, bang, bang, here it is. Well, I've got one on my shelf here somewhere, actually. Oh. I've got one. But and, Do you and want to go and get it? Yeah, I will have to take the computer with me. Oh my um, God! Yeah, to take but, the computer. Well, I don't have to. No, you can you can sing in the meantime. But actually, that's incorrect. What you've just said, because Sandy spoke at my Hastings Uprising Shine and left her suitcase behind, which is now in my house. So I have all her books and her and her computer and everything. So she can't just walk in. But I am returning it to her next week. She just left it behind by mistake. Oh, but you sing you. while I go and get my Agenda Twenty One. Have a little sing song. Well. Due to the aspects of the internal aspects of the secret space program beside me, 
This is the plan for space. And uh, what we'll do is we'll do this. And that's it up there. And uh, this is the plan for space. And that there is the century, the plan for this century. And by the end of this century, round right about there, these various programs here, oh God, yeah, these things like there and up there are all these sort of things. The, the writing here is so extremely, really fine. And that's what done by Rockwell International. I think it was probably done as a bet. The whole plan for Washington to have the president get up and say, yeah, aliens are real and this is a post-disclosure world and we deal with the whole alien thing. He laughed at that. Karen, have you fallen oh, over? Oh, we're not. Um, oh, God. Well, as you can see, I've come back empty-handed because it's gone. Just wondering, I think I think one of the kids might have taken it. Or um, maybe MI six and a half. Maybe, maybe. But I do lend it out to people because to, to prove there is a book you can get on Amazon. You can probably still get it, you know, and I've had it a, a good few years. Um and that's why when I was talking about this before this thing kicked off, I was saying, look, here it is. And if do you, you want to readjust it, your camera? And while yeah. you do that, I'll do mine. Is this being recorded, by the way, Miles? It's recording. I can't see a little thing that says recording. No, I'm that's not the... recording it on Zoom. You're not what? I'm not recording it on Zoom. Oh, I see you're recording it on the other way. Um, so, yeah, I, I found it really useful. I'm just looking around to see where I've got piles of stuff all over the place. Um, but I would use it when I would go, when I started, actually, when I set up the Freedom Network. And I would take it to meetings and saying, this is what we are doing. This is what's happening at the moment, Agenda 21. And it's a book. You can get it. And when you read it, it looks quite nice. You think, oh, they're protecting the land and they're protecting the females and they're protecting all this sort of stuff. And then you read between the lines and you realise like it's a, a permanent lockdown that they <laughs> Yeah, I have in mind. which we're approaching now with all these strikes mm. happening, and mm. uh, we'll see how that's going to work. Indeedy, indeedy. And, and but yeah, going back to Sandy, she's a lovely, lovely, lovely lady. She's a really lovely lady, so knowledgeable, um, and I've got a lot of time for her. And I'm, I always love, you know, getting together with Sandy because she's just a, a wise, a wise woman. That is why I think she is key to this because she knows about the really dark stuff that I've been talking about. Mm. But the idea is that she can she can present it in a much more... In a gentle way. And she's a very spiritual person as well because she's talking all about this really heavy stuff. But she's very spiritual. And I think most, most people on this path, the true people that understand what's going on, are very spiritual because that's why the love and light thing has been hijacked, you know? and all the other stuff, because it is a spiritual process we're going through when you're talking about the ether and consciousness and, you know, which all that the, kind which of... Which is the one thing that Bill Gates gave a presentation to the CIA yeah. and actually said, this is the part of the brain we need to attack to neutralise, and then that's the God part or the empathy part of the mind, which yes. seems to work on that. And when you're dealing with that kind of sinisterism, it's... It's, oh. these, the, uh, it's deep. It's I can't say what I would want to say because it would get no, me arrested. No, but we know. Tell, you can use your telepathy and, and I've got that message. Now, the is other good where, thing is the yeah. people I've been interviewing this year are contactees, abductees, the mind control people who've gone through the whole thing. Wonderful yeah. girl called Le, uh, Lilu Dallas. And she uh, may turn up, but she is contracted under contract um, to uh, go back to some guy called uh, Jeffrey Epstein, who mm -hmm. she's contacted. I've heard of him. Yeah. So she was on the island and all that sort of stuff and uh, has seen it, being a very young girl mm. and gone through a whole pile of things, and that's monarch mind control. So, for instance, when you see... Uh, 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 Butterflies. A, a particular type of butterfly, and they, they have these butterflies flash frame mm. it into pop videos and stuff, mm. that is an indication of the subliminal programming that they're having. Mm. Mm. Uh, uh, in the pop music industry, which is what Mike, Mark Devlin has talked about in great detail and others have talked about in great detail. Mm. So the whole pop music thing is you know, a, whole, that's a whole different thing. Well, again, it's been hijacked, isn't it? You know, you sell your soul to the devil and then you get rich and famous, which many of these pop stars stars want to, want to become. But it is interesting because through the Freedom Network, people musicians are contacting me small small time musicians at the mo at the moment who want to
get exposure, but obviously they don't want to go down that route, which is lovely because as we're creating this new reality through the Freedom Network and other stuff that I'm trying to create, that's what I'm trying to do, bring in, you know, bring in the good guys as yes. such, and they don't have to sell their soul. Um, but we've got this social media thing that's taken over, hasn't it? Social well, media meta, and Facebook. The, 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 the term yeah, meta the for metaverse. Facebook, and that should tell you about how they're wanting to build everything into a metaverse. Mm. Mm. And that goes to the agenda 2045, which people mm. should talk get across, where yeah. hum, human beings will no longer exist as 3D. They yeah. will exist as an avatar, like in the Avatar movie. You will be, well, this is the point, where you actually exist and what you exist in will be a yeah. metaverse. So that's, yeah. that's Zuckerberg and the CIA compatriots. So yeah, full. yeah, yeah. And it's interesting because Elon Musk, they're trying to portray him as a good man at the moment, aren't they, since he's, I don't know, did he buy Twitter or was he in the process of buying Twitter? I think he bought it, but he, he is annoyed at uh, being photobombed with uh, the, the lovely, uh, what's her name, Maxwell? Oh, right. <laughs> There's a lot of people using that as, as oh. against them, and he's very sensitive to that. Right. And one of but, the... he, but is he a good guy? Because he's the one that wants to, to you know, put, put a, a, a line in here and connect us to the computer. Well, this is what goes back to the German experiments, which mm. which Barry King and the, the people that I met way back and interviewed way back in 1994, that that's what they were doing. The Germans were looking into that technology to make mm. the super soldier the... But anyway, the other little thing yeah. that we've got upstairs is a room which is available for workshops, and that's hopefully people will, people will take advantage of that. If people want to book time, this, it's up to the speakers to book that. There's a little yeah. room upstairs. Uh, the hall is a wonderful hall at Pusey. It's got lots of it's got lots of things and lots of places, and we hope yeah. to have the speakers with all their stuff all over the place so people can have a look. And it's got a great kitchen. There's a great pub outside. There's an Indian restaurant there. There's a cafe out there. There's a couple of carryouts. And mm. um, your great speaker, Sam, is spe is living in the area for the, for that two or three days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sam, or Sam, who's going to be um, introducing the people? Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, that's he's, he's lovely. I mean, Sam, he's from Sea Haven, and and he's actually. He, he, <laughs> I mean, we just um, got together through the network and coming to meetings and stuff like that. And he, when I'd see him in, in London on some of the marches, he'd be there with his megaphone and he just had a way with, with speaking publicly or to people. Well, he's also and about he's, six foot six, isn't he? No. I don't think so. Is well, he? He's, he's t he's t I think he's... Yeah. Maybe he looks tall. Maybe that's when he's on the stage. He's probably six foot six on the stage yeah. I don't think he's, he's exceptionally tall, but he's a, he's a really lovely man. He's funny and and... And I'm really pleased that he's doing this and coming along to, you know, to support well, us. Well, that's 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 right we want to we want to keep things lighthearted. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's that's right. He's he's a uh, he's you know people look forward to hearing him um, introduce the guests, the speakers, and then he'll, he'll you know he'll, he'll add his own bits and pieces. Also, he's a, he's an expert in crypto, so he's um, organizing a few workshops locally. But he will travel if people want to know about. Crypto well, if he wants to do it. a workshop on crypto, he can have the upstairs. You know. Yeah, I'll let uh, him the, know. It's That's interesting that idea. with the Ukraine and a lot of the technology, the computers and stuff in there, a lot of the cryptocurrency took a bit of a hit on that. Is that right? Yes, I, I, did, I did. I saw something going. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah interesting times. Uh, interesting times. Swinging back to pirate radio, way back in nineteen. 85 around a station in Northern Ireland and uh, one of the DJs in that was a truck driver and he went to Yeeho, country, country music guy. Mm -hmm. I was talking to him first time since 1985 and he's retired now. He's got busted knees like a lot of the guys do. You know, on those mm. sort of, sort of. Mm. He, knew, he knows all about the labs in Ukraine. Everything. It, it, yeah, mm. oh yeah, no problem. It's just, it's just mm. common knowledge at a certain level. Yes, it is common it's knowledge. No, big at a deal certain level. no, I know because it's what's been going on for so long, and yeah, ex exactly. It, wow, so exciting! I mean, you've got such an eclectic, interesting bunch of people that are wise and knowledgeable, and they've got the evidence to prove, you know, what is going on here. So it's it's a conference not to be missed, I should say. Well, it's time to get bums on seats and get it get it done, mm. and it's fantastic, mm. and it's, it's a big honour to have you have you on board. I don't think so. It, I think it's it just, is. Oh, bless you. Well, that's a very nice thing to say, but it's a nice, no, but, it's very, it's a big honour for me to be working with you on 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 but this. You as well. are out there getting all these conferences, all individual, all round the place. Well, what we're trying to do now, I've, I've created something called One Our New Earth, um, and that's where I've been putting my focus. So it's kind of linked to the Freedom Network, but the Freedom Network is me just really sitting on a computer and then organising conference. 
the idea is to bring the people together. And with this Our New Earth concept, it's now bringing communities together or an awareness. So some people have described it like a yellow pages. It's, it's beyond the yellow pages, but it is a, it's, it is a method of getting all the expert knowledge under one roof as such. So as the community say, OK, we, we're going to go and not so much live off grid, but we want to grow our own food or we want to home educate or we want our own health system, then they're saying, where do we start? And we say, well, come here because we've got these experts lined up. These people have already done it. So we're trying to get that out, you know, very quickly. Um, and it's, it's, it's quite a lot of time. Um, we've only just launched it at the end of April and to see who wants to be part of it. But as usual, there's a lot of egos involved in this kind of stuff, as I'm sure you've With all aware. kinds of uh, organisations, you'll get that. And you also get the and people who, who, who promise the earth, get themselves yeah. very important and then suddenly don't deliver. That, that's right. And, and also people trying to trying to break it before it's even gone anywhere. Yeah. And, it, and there and will be MI5, time. MI4, yeah. KGB. Yeah, yeah. FSB. But I and who are Dark you? Forces. Have you got, I've forces. got your dog there. I have. Do you want to yeah, lift the dog up? Because it looks as if you've got an well, itch. <laughs> hang on. I've got two dogs. They're both on heat. Oh, oh God. Listen. And um, Were these the two dogs? Were these the two dogs at James? Can you see her? Yes, yes, they are. There's one and there's the other one. I don't know if you can see the other one um, on the sofa. And that's, that's just the mum. I'm about to see the sofa, yeah. Yeah. Oh, can you see it? But um, they're both yeah. on heat. And last night, the little one was actually mounting the mother. Oh, and um, it was quite, <laughs> it was quite interesting. The mother, this is what I'm stroking now, was trying to leg it, but Amber, she's worn herself out now by chasing her mother literally all around the house, and then doing what boy dogs do. But they're both females, so um, it's interesting. I do need to take them out, but I'm a little bit wary of taking them out because all the boy dogs come over and um, you know want to get involved. So I've got to be a bit careful. We don't have well, do you, little, do you not want the boy dogs to get involved? Well, I, we, we did try and mate Amber. Last year we tried to mate her, so we took her to a breeder and um, left her there for two nights because apparently that's what one does whilst they, you know, build up a budding relationship with her boyfriend. And when she came home that night, she was obviously in a bit of shock because that's when she first started to mount her mother. And it was like saying, look what I've been doing for the last couple of days. And it was just really odd. And now they're, they're both in heat, which is interesting, both simultaneously. Um, she's doing it again. And my son last night, he said, well, maybe we should go and find her a boyfriend. I think that's a good so, thing to do. Yeah. <laughs> well, with any luck, my friend Anna, he's got this wonderful Samoyed dog. I can't say it right. Samoyed? Samoyed. Oh. oh, I don't know. A what, white, Japanese white, thing. It's a big uh, fluffy it, thing. It's a big white dog. It's, I think it's actually Northern Russian or Siberian. Oh, is it? oh okay. But I think I know what you mean. That sort of like a, 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 a fluffier husky thing. Short and yeah. like a bear. No, not like yeah, a bear. You can anyway. actually, you can actually grow, you know, if you, the hair you can actually weave into a cloth. Yeah, oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's a useful dog to have around then. Yeah, well, if that's it. Yeah. yeah. And it can be lead dogs. Very good for leading and very, very, very loyal. Mm. Well, dogs are loyal and they're lovely, aren't they? I just, I love dogs. You know, they're, they're just which is why I can't have one. Because I just need to bugger off sometimes. I mean, that's the thing. They are a commitment. They are a commitment. Luckily, I've got other people in the house that I can just go, or I take them with me. Um, yeah, which is is quite sweet. I don't think I'll be bringing them with me to to your your do. That I'll be leaving them behind. Oh well. Yeah. Well, uh, well, that, that's it. A little ten minute Excellent. little uh, promo ten video. Uh, mm. I think we've run for fifty five minutes. And, well, okay. That's great. Well, it was nice catching catching up with you, Miles. I'll get this together and and, and and upload it today. Yeah, and send it my way, and then I'll put it on my yeah. on my things and yeah. let people know and and get some get some. And I'll, uh, I'll just put the, the I'll just put the link at the bottom. It'll be there all the time. Great. Yeah. Excellent. I don't I don't have these squares with all the stuff in it. What squares? You know the squares where they put them on the on the logo. QR oh code. god, that's a technical. That's all technical stuff. No, I don't have anything like that. I, I, don't know I why take I a I take a black felt tip pen and move around <laughs> some of the square. Just, oh, do you? Just, <laughs> oh, you're talking about QR things. Yeah, QRs. Yeah. Oh yeah, it just takes a little black. <laughs> yeah. You totally throw them out, can you? An extra dot here or there. I've never used one. Actually, yeah. I don't know how to use it, and I have no intention. Of well, using actually, one. before we close, just close. Oh. I got a new mobile phone. I discovered mm. that the damn blue spectrum off mobile phone. Uh, OLED screens are dangerous to people's eyes. They are really dangerous. My eyes, after, after after half an hour of using my new phone, 
Mm. This the blue light from this made it so harmful to my eyes. I couldn't focus on the screens on, on the wow. computer screen. Wow. That's interesting. I, I, I thought out. it was supposed to protect your eyes. No, they're absolutely you – know, blue Blue light, uh, high-energy blue light is extremely damaging mm. to the retina. It is absolutely lethal. Wow. I didn't know that. There is I a, really there didn't is know a, that. Mm. There is a – all smartphones have this. That's why they have so many adjustments for eye comfort. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what I thought. I thought on my settings, Are you bl Are you brown-eyed? I'm blue-eyed. Blue-eyed. Blue light filter. Here we are. One phone. Yeah. yeah, blue light filter. That's what I have on to oh, I see so to to deter the blue light that is coming at you. Well, if why do they think they have to have a blue light filter? Yes, only for people that know that they want to put it on because you're yeah. going to have your eyes damaged. Yeah. And well, I mean, I I bought a, I got a second I get everything second hand and I got a second hand phone the other month, thinking that it won't have all the new stuff on that you don't want, but it it has. It's got all this. Crap, you know, like the Facebook and the LinkedIn and, and, and whatever, all these things that you don't want. And you can't get them off unless you go behind the scenes or you know somebody technical. Which you do but, know. You well, I do know people. You, be, yes, you do uh, have a guy who did appear at your conference. Well, I do, yeah, I just haven't had the time. I, I haven't seen him. You know, we're just busy, 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 aren't yeah. we? So I just go along with it at the but moment. you can and, get and, a completely de-Googled phone. I've got one. But then when I tried to put in Waze when I was going somewhere, I didn't have the app. And you can't have the app unless you go onto Google. <laughs> because it piggybacks on Google Maps. Mm, That's yeah. right. Or the, or the other one, or the PlayStation, whatever it is, is, you know. So you have to have, and so it's sat on my, it's there. I can see it's sitting in the box. I've had it for over a year, but I can't really use it. So again, if you have the time to get organized, you could have one for one job and the other one for another job, can't you? Well, I'm using or, my old phone and I just don't log into the uh, to um, Google. Right, yeah. And yeah, my yeah, sat nav yeah. app so, suddenly works again. Yeah. Well, I, I try not to use Google. I don't use it. I mean, I don't Google. I try not to Google anything. My Is it a browser they call it? Yeah. I use Brave because I know people said Duck Go, Duck, Duck Go was supposed to be a really good book. Uh -uh. I, I noticed that. Duck, Duck Go mm. wouldn't find Brighty on. Well, also, it's a bit naughty. Duck, Duck Go isn't as, as, as safe as people. Have In the same way that Firefox, which has a remarkably yeah. similar logo to Google, well, yeah, yeah. And, so and that's got the same brand. thing. It's it was for all those people. Oh, I don't like Google. Oh, I will yeah, go to so Firefox, but it was owned by it was owned by Google. Yeah, as, as they all are. Brave is is the one that I'm, I think is is the best one. I think sometimes you might struggle to find certain things, but it hasn't given me any problems. And then also sometimes you turn your computer and it's gone back. It tries to default to Google or DuckDuckGo or. Yeah, it's very naughty. They're very, they're very naughty. But, well, um, the, uh, one of the things that Matthew put on my computer was a little thing which stops the, uh, the the updates. Yeah, that's another thing. Bloody updates. Yeah. yeah, and then you fill your phone with all their stuff, so you have to go and buy a new one. It's all. It's all very, I, I had very the, I had the full thirty two gigabyte of my SD card uploaded onto Google, which meant I couldn't receive any emails. Uh, yeah, that's the emails the thing. You get, work. Yeah. Yeah. And the whole point of having the SD card was so I didn't bloody upload them to anybody. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Get yourself a I camera hope. with film in it. That's it. Okay. Mm. Thank you very much, Karen. This is fantastic. We'll get this Pleasure. done. We'll get it Pleasure. done. It's done. Job I'm meeting done. a new right. person in an, in an hour who's a okay. targeted individual and wants to talk. And uh, I'm not going to do any recording with them, but that, no. that's, oh, that's interesting. These people well, are all out there, and they're all suffering. They're all. Yeah. Thing. Well, I well I've got a, a, a call this evening with somebody in in this one that I'm creating one club we've called it, and um, and he is being victimised, and they're accusing him of being a member of this group and that group, and he shouldn't have done this, and he's an infiltrator, and he's on the other side. So I said, okay, you you guys are of saying these things to him, let's have a, a, a group session. So tonight I'm hosting a, a, a live Zoom. I will record it and get it out there so he can defend himself. They can ask all these questions. Because I think, again, maybe it's ignorance on people's part or maybe he In the UFO community, we would all yeah. have these hissy fits and tantrums. And if you yeah. got, if everybody could stand in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a circle and say, you work for the government, you're, mm. you're a government spy. In the case of most of the established UFO organizations who've never actually accomplished anything in 30 to 40 years of their existence, their UFO reporting line was actually in an MI5 person's house. <laughs> so that, that, that was, so that's a, historically the UFO thing 
took off so much. People have no idea the thousands of people in the States who assembled in the deserts to meet these things. Mm. Thousands mm. and thousands mm. of people. Yeah. And, um, and nowadays you're lucky to get 150. Why? What's happening? Because Why? The, the, UFO, the UFO subject has been so... Okay. No, a non-starter for so. Have you, if you yeah. bought a magazine today, and you looked at uh, um, a magazine from maybe 1980, covering mm. the same stories, nothing has changed in 40 mm. years at mm. least. There were groups who did publish genuine researches, and uh, the head of community, the head of certain certain groups, they all got bumped off. A lot of long line of people just getting sick. Mm. Ash Gray dying, editors of certain magazines. It's been a very, very mucky road. Mm. Mm. Anyway. Anyway, on that note, days. yeah, happy days. Love and light to everybody um, and to you in particular. You look very well, though. You look very fit. You've lost a few pounds, I think, haven't you? Uh, well, stress. not from last night. I had two I had no? chicken dips and, and weather spoons last night at 11 oh, 20. Lovely. I'd no? finished doing an interview with this guy called Sean David Morton. Mm. Uh, Sean, yeah, Sean, what's his name? Sean David M Morton. He's publishing these books, and oh. uh, he's Fine just right he's, he's targeted mm. with throat cancer now. So he's been in the UFO business for years. He was at Area Fifty One before it became a whole lot of stuff, and um, he's aware of the whole stuff. On he, he's written loads of scripts for the Sci Fi Channel. Uh, did loads of his reject. He was a producer for the Art Bell Coast to Coast mm. show. That's mm. Coast to Coast oh, yeah. AM. That's yeah. fantastic. It's really worthwhile people digging up those. Uh, if you can go to the Coast to Coast AM site, it's very important because Coast to Coast does different merchandise. And um, and you want to go to the Coast to Coast AM site and those archive shows that Art Bell did uh, really two or three hours worth of stuff. You can just listen to them in the car, the stuff that they talked about. And the person who sort of picked up that thing in this country is uh, on Talk, T Talk Radio. Okay. Uh, what's his name? Talks with a very authoritative voice. Yes, I know who you mean. I know exactly uh, who you mean. He was actually a newsreader on Radio Nova mm. in Ireland. And he talked very, very, uh, what's his name? Mm. Uh, but he, he does that sort of thing. He picked up that. It's not anything as good as the coast to coast. Mm. But that was that was built up, and Sean David he 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 built up he helped build up the audience like they had like three mm. or four million of coast uh, uh, overnight in the states. Wow, wow. Anyway, a lot of Good stuff, stuff on that if people want to get get across it. Brilliant. All right then. Okay, Mars. Well, enjoy your day. Rest off, and I shall see you very soon. I can now breathe. <sighs> oh. <sighs> <laughs> oh, I'm not recording anymore, no? I'm still recording. Right. Oh, good still night recording. and oh, God bless. Good night from me and good night from you. Yeah. Goodbye. Goodbye.